forward to my computer. All right, we're good. All right, so I'm gonna dive in and I have a lot prepared here for you. So I'm gonna try to not go too, too quickly, but um, of course, you know, let, let me know if you have questions and I am gonna get started. So we are gonna talk of all about personal branding today as it relates to a career pivot. Um, so super quickly, who am I? I worked in financial services at Goldman Sachs and then Bridgewater alongside of my job. I was informally career coaching for years. And then eventually I got coaching training and certified at NYU and then uh, through the ICF. I did a tech MBA program at NYU Stern. And then I started uh, doing coaching at various organizations. We worked Flatiron School, uh, Columbia University, um, and Project Activate, and I've been building my company since late 2017. And we offer a digital platform for career exploration, as well as job search, upskilling, personal branding. And we're really helping professionals to be intentional with every career decision that they make. So happy to go into any elements of my background um, at any point if it's helpful, but that is the quick overview. And today we are gonna talk about resume, we are gonna talk about professional summary, LinkedIn cover letters, job search, uh, career exploration. I have really jam packed this for you to get a, a little bit of everything. And then, like I said, ask any question career wise that you would like to ask. So um, I am gonna talk a lot about, you know, the resume amongst other things today, uh, but you know, uh, don't, don't feel like you need to multitask, uh, take notes, edit the resume after, and that is the way to go. Um, so what is the resume all about? And I'm gonna move this so I can actually see my screen. Um, the resume can be used for networking. Of course, it's used during interviews. Of course, it's during online applications. Um, but there are ways that the resume can really highlight your background, but it can also highlight your strengths and your direction. Um, and as much as it's important, there are a lot of other important parts here. So we're going to talk about the, the sort of brand that you have on paper, as well as the brand that you can build in terms of getting your foot in the drawer. So um, the resume should be comprehensive. It's interesting, when, especially we talk about a pivot. And yes, we want to balance how relevant it is to the role ahead, but I don't want anyone to feel like they need to ignore the varied skill set that they do have. I personally think your varied background and your experiences can really add a uh, perspective to a company, right? If you're the only engineer who's coming in, having had done marketing before, that's interesting and that's different. So don't be afraid to leverage your varied background, but it, it's, so that's kind of why I say comprehensive. And there's a way of making sense of that story. And we are gonna talk about the um, professional summary, which helps to make sense of that story. Um, you're gonna speak to your choices, your work style, and make the resume stories come to life during the conversation. So there's only so much we can do in the resume itself. And just remember that we're really gonna speak to who you are in those conversations and uh, really have people get to know you. So the way I like to get started with a resume is having like a skeleton document so that you can really just figure out your formatting first. And then um, you can, uh, like I said, put placeholder text, um, choosing your font, font size, design, anything like that. And then, of course, you can fill in your text after that. So that's step number one. And if you are in any creative or design oriented field, you would want a resume that's a little more visually appealing. If you're in something a little more straightforward, you don't, you can have a very, very standard format. And I like to use things that are not uh, so new to people and, 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 you know, things that someone is used to and easily can just digest quickly is probably the best. So don't feel like you need to overcomplicate the format. Um, formatting should be clean, uh, clean and simple and straightforward. I like to actually zoom it, uh, sorry, zoom out. So like you can actually look at the format. Imagine, you know, with your little uh, magnifying glass, you zoom out really far on that document just to see like, what does the layout even look like? Um, clean, consistent, not distracting. The last thing we want is a distracting format. Um, using underline, bold, and italics in your favor. You don't want it to look too complex, but, you know, if you were at a major education institution, if you had really reputable uh, organizations that you've worked for, role titles, anything that's relevant, it's your place to highlight those things, right? Of course, spacing, alignment, be really 
Uh, if you're not good at pinpointing those details, have someone else help you to do it. Um, and of course, in terms of space, uh, avoiding lines that just have like one or two words will help you to um, use that real estate really wisely. Um, and of course, reverse chronological uh, in terms of your experiences and the order um, and structuring the experiences, of course, should be very consistent. Um, these are just some sections you can use a summary, the professional experience that you've had, uh, your technical experience, education, skills, interests. Um, and even if you have a project section, you want to include role titles. This is especially important when you're pivoting. If you're showing that you've done a pro bono project or a side project or anything, what role were you playing? Were you acting as a software engineer during that time? Give it like format that project like any other work experience so that it looks as real as the other things because it is. It's a project, right? So if you were acting as whatever that role title is, you would format it consistently. Um, and I know people are really dicey about the summary. I'm going to show you how to create a really strong summary so that it really works in your favor, especially if you're pivoting. So this is like a super, super basic example <coughs> of a format. And like, this is the simplest possible version I could really give you, right? Um, summary, if you are pivoting, maybe you highlight your skills up top instead of at the bottom, um, professional experience project experience, any additional information down below, certifications, right? This is the most basic, simple way you could go about it if you wanted to keep it simple. It's not bad to keep it simple because you want their eyes to draw to the words versus the um, format. I'm actually going to show you, let me stop sharing super quickly. I'm going to show you very quickly this one newer design that I put together that I think is interesting. It's a little more innovative so that if you're pivoting, you can actually show someone a little more of who you are holistically rather than just like a standard um, typical format. So I'm, I'm gonna show you what I mean. So I had uh, actually created this with a designer where it's a little bit more about like who you are as a person, right? So your strengths, your skills, your interpersonal, uh, your back, your, your, your strengths, and then your direction, right? Roles you excel in, industries you're passionate about, environments you thrive in, what are your goals, as well as your background, your skills, your background, your specialties, what industries you've been in, right? So background, strengths, direction, and then your experience is here, but it's not the forefront. It's just highlighting that you've done some stuff before. And as you can see, it's even more creative in the sense that it's, what did you do? What were the impacts you had? And what did you learn? Um, so it's a little more things and a little more, um, let me just make sure we're all muted. Um, and, and, and let me know any questions in the chat. I'm paying attention to the chat, but, um, so, so this is just a bit of a creative format. Um, you know, just if, if you are pivoting, it, it sort of can help paint a holistic picture of you, um, potentially more than a traditional format. So let me go back here and reshare. Um, so hold on one second, you guys. All righty. So now we've got to get into the content. Of course, we want strong action verbs. I never want someone to say responsible for or things like that. Really be specific with the verbs that you use as specific as you can to describe what you were doing. And of course, that is the place where you can really highlight transferable skills right? What were the verbs that you've done in the past and how can you relate your phrasing of how you explain what you've done in a way that is relevant to what you might do going forward? So what did you do? How'd you do it? Why'd you do it? Who'd you work with? Outcomes and impact. Use metrics as much as possible and I'm going to get to that. Um, each bullet should be its own idea. Sometimes we have bullets that are like three lines for that one bullet if you use the concept that each line or each bullet is an idea or a task or a project, it will sort of force, it'll be this like exercise where you'll have to succinctly summarize, how do I explain that you know, thing in one bullet, right? So that length of text is a good length just for that one responsibility, right? You wanna be, the, the art of why this is difficult is because you have to be comprehensive and yet also concise, right? Um, make sure a non-technical person can understand your projects and you can have other people read it to point out areas of confusion. Um, I'm reading this question, addressing gaps on the resume. Um, so good question in the chat, uh, a few things. 
Number one, LinkedIn just added a feature where you can actually add gaps on LinkedIn um, to highlight what that gap was all about and uh, you know what, what, why, what you were doing during the gap. So on LinkedIn, you should explore that feature. In a resume, I've actually toyed around with the idea of like, I think in italics, in a small font, in between your experiences, you could write what you were doing. If you were doing something like raising a family or, or something like that, that's like super legitimate, like you absolutely could explain that gap. However, I do think that gaps are also something you speak about when you're explaining the walk me through your resume of, you know, what were you doing when and what was your next step. So just remember that we really need them to meet you and hear from you and learn your story. Um, and, you know, um, but, but I, I do think that you actually can write it in there if you wanted to, but it's really a judgment call. Um, again, we want to overly focus on um, networking to make them know who you are more than judging that piece of paper, right? Um, quantitative metrics. So, who, you know, how quickly did you do that thing? Did you reduce something or improve or increase something by a percent, by a dollar amount, anything possible numbers, numbers, numbers. How many people did you work with? How quickly did it go? Like literally read every bullet and say, where can I put numbers in? It brings it to life and it shows the scope and the depth and the breadth of what you did and how you did it. Even if it was only overseeing, managing two people, that's way better than saying managed people because now I really get it. Like, wow, you are capable and you oversaw a team of two. Like, it's not small. It's actually brings it to life so that we can clearly see legitimately the specifics of what you did. So I would really suggest that. Um, ordering the bullet. So for example, you want to make it like most important to least important or most relevant to least relevant in terms of the order of your bullets. Um, this is a random example that I put together just to show you how to like be super specific. You analyzed um, this data set of 10,000 rows to uncover patterns. You created a data model for the whatever team to analyze the data on a daily basis. You developed a dashboard to oversee performance. You trained three interns. I mean, I actually just made this up, but look how specific it is, even though it's just a very brief bullet. And that's what you want. Every word is precious real estate here, okay? All right, so I'm gonna walk you through the summary, all right? So I'm gonna show you an example template um, with your summary, you want to be specific again. You want to be authentic. The last thing we want is generic um, words. If you are saying any sort of fluffy generic words that we all like to say, great communicator, I would really dive deeper and ask yourself, what type of communication do I do really well? Like, how can I say it in a way that's not the generic, right? But it's really helping them to get to know me. And that relies on you actually reflecting and having that deep self-awareness. So work with a mentor, work with a peer, work with a coach, and really understand your strengths so that you can clearly visibly represent them. Um, so yes, this can be used in writing or to introduce yourself, actually. It's a simple format you can use when you're saying, tell me about yourself. Um, it's also great in writing because it's how you can own that story, especially if you're pivoting. And you can actually use this on your resume and on your LinkedIn. So sentence number one, is your background, right? Give yourself a title. Are you a data analysis person? Are you a software engineer? Even if you're new to doing that for three months, six months, nine months, 12 months, call yourself that thing. That's okay. If you are going in that direction and you have limited experience, call yourself what you want to call yourself. Um, and tell them what are your areas of expertise? Again, if it's newer skills plus older skills, you choose a list of like, three to five skills that are most relevant to your direction. In this case, I made up an example, data modeling, data visualization, mobile app development. You could list, I would say five or six maximum of these hard skills that represent your background. And then you wanna say, what industries do you have exposure to, okay? So one sentence highlighting your background. It's hard to do, but this is why it's an exercise. You can write it out um, and play around with it, okay? Sentence two, your strengths. What do you do really well and how and why do you do it so well? What are your superpowers, right? And, and how and why do you do that thing so well? So here's an example, right? Communicating project needs clearly amongst varied internal and external stakeholders, turning data into stories to improve business operations and building team camaraderie. Again, those are all made up things, but you can see how I listed three things that are like pretty specific. 
I mean, a little bit, I would say some are things you might've heard other people say about themselves, but they're, I would say they're not like so generic where it's just like good communication, right? Like be as specific and authentic. What are your top one, two, or three things that you are amazing at? What should someone hire you to do? This is the place you get to write that out. That's beautiful, right? Sentence three, your direction. What types of roles and industries do you want to go into next? And all of a sudden, when you put it together, background, strengths, direction, they know how to make sense of your skills. If you tell them how to make sense of your skills, right? What are you looking to do next? And you can write the role titles, or you can say the type of work, like analyzing data, right? If you want to keep it that way. But to say the role title, this is a great way to do it because ATS systems will pick up those keywords. So this is a really good opportunity to say what it is you want to do. Um, yes, Catherine, I will. Um, I'm already recording, I hope. So yes, we can, uh, we, can, uh, we can distribute that. I know I'm going quickly and I know you're going to want to reference this after the fact. So yes, you, you can and should do this. Uh, maybe if I, not tonight, but you know, after when we send this out, you can refer back to this. Okay, so tailoring your resume. You obviously want to review target job descriptions, find patterns of the keywords you see often, and make sure they appear. That is the bottom line. However, the caveat, most jobs are landed through networking, so don't just rely on online applications. I know we're talking about resume. We're going to talk about some other things as well. So it's good and it's important to make this strong, but it's not the only thing that you will be doing. Um, of course, make the updates in a regular, you know, consistency as you grow. Um, and I like to check it about once a month. If you're in a job, then maybe every three months. But if you're job searching, I, I, I like to, once you get a strong document, once a month, because people over-index their time on just swimming in resume changes. I, I, again, get it updated, get it strong, and then once a month, refer back and make some updates and make some tweaks. Versions. Um, I believe in one resume version. It forces you to figure out who you are. You are one person, so how can you possibly have more than one document. I recognize that each document could be tailored differently, but if it's being tailored differently, then I personally think it means that you are pursuing more than one role. And if you're pursuing more than one role, I would really encourage you to figure out which of those roles is the best or better fit and double down on trying to find that role. Because if you're searching for like a role that's not as great of a fit, you're probably wasting your time. So doubling down on finding more of the right thing, right? So I think one resume version becomes this forcing mechanism for you to say, who am I and what is the best way of representing who I am and where I want to go? All right, we're going to, I know I'm going quickly, but we're going to go through some LinkedIn stuff. Uh, okay, of course, photos, clear photos, your headshot and the background photo, you should customize that. Um, your headline is so important. That is the space right underneath your name where you can right keywords, the algorithm really picks up this section, you should be writing the role titles that you want to go pursue in the headline. And you should use up the full character count. So say you're looking into, you know, solutions engineer, software engineer, and data analyst or whatever, use all that space for every keyword possible about the hard skills, the role titles, what should someone hire you to do? Fill that up as much as you can. And of course, the summary that I just showed you, you can put that into your about section and make sure your about section has, again, the keywords of what you're looking to do. The other thing in your about section, you can include some of like key technical systems, tools, skills that you know, any and all keywords, you can put that into the about section as well. So work experience. Um, I like to do a short summary. I don't you could put every bullet from your resume, but I think it looks really nice when you just have like one or two sentences um, and focus on what you did. Like a lot of people are tempted to say, what did the company do? Or like, what did the team do? I like to just one or two sentences. What did you do there? What was the impact? Um, and of course, again, it's an important place to use keywords during that um, experience section in the description of each uh, work experience. The other thing is the role titles. We didn't really talk about this earlier, but if you did more than one thing, like maybe in a prior role, you were acting 30% of your time as a product manager, but your role title wasn't a product manager. It's okay to say you were 
A, B, and C as a role title on your resume and on your LinkedIn, as long as you're being accurate and truthful and using industry, industry standard terms to represent what you did, if you know that you were doing a form of product management or whatever it is, you can highlight that both in the role titles and of course in the description. Um, education, of course, fill up any details about your education. You want to go to add profile section, right? Fill it up. There's no page limit to the LinkedIn. Um, you want to add any memberships, awards, volunteering, projects, hyperlink the articles if there's any relevant work that you can add. Um, and of course, there's a skills section. Add everything you possibly can to that skills section. Add everything that is relevant to your direction is what I mean. Um, and of course, get a recommendation. So ask somebody, a colleague, a prior manager, anyone you've ever worked with, and just what is it like to work with you? What's your demeanor? This is a great place for somebody to write about who you are. And ideally, they can speak to some of your skills that are relevant to your future direction. But at the very least, let them talk about what the great things are about you and working with you. Um, okay, ensure your contact information is public. That's a setting that you can change. Um, and really just go through all of your settings in the top where you go to settings and privacy, go through everything, make sure you are visible, of course, um, and stay active. You can comment on conversations, you can repost articles, or you can write your own thought leadership posting, whether it's a blog, a video, an article, really being active in the conversation is another method for somebody to learn about you and meet you and honestly see that you have thought leadership. They see that you're, you're an expert, they see your skills, they see your perspective by hearing from you on LinkedIn, right? Um, it's not something you have to do all day, every day, but give yourself a little reminder for a little bit throughout the week to be active in those ways. And if you're not comfortable, work with a coach, mentor, peer to try to figure out what content you would get comfortable with to post. Um, and 500 connections, I believe, is uh, where the algorithm likes. So kind of annoying if you don't feel like you have 500. I don't want you to add random people. But the bottom line is anyone you know personally, you should connect because it's going to help you leverage their network from mutual connections as well. So make sure you're connecting um, with the people that you know, even if it's personal, you know, life, uh, family, friends, et cetera. Um, okay, cover letter. I'm going to go through this very quickly. We don't know if anyone cares, but let's have one anyway, right? It doesn't have to be difficult and we don't want you to waste a ton of time. Use a standard framework. So intro paragraph, who are you, your background, your fit, your interest, um, two body paragraphs, pick two prior experiences that relate to the role at hand. And this is your space to tell a story about what you did, how you did it, the outcomes, the impact in a way that is relevant to the direction that you want to go in. And a final paragraph, what are you great at? Why are you a fit? And why are you interested? Don't overcomplicate it. Have something strong and simple. Have somebody help you edit it. And just once you have one template, you can tweak that going forward. The only reason to have different versions is if you are looking into different roles, those body paragraphs would have to change. But again, if you have different roles that you're looking at, I would really think about which one is the best fit. Um, general branding tips. Portfolios could be relevant. It depends on your path. You really need to understand for your role, is that something that would be helpful or is it necessary and required? A personal video. There's so much on video these days. Record a 60 second introduction. You can use the professional summary framework and introduce yourself. You can post that on your, you could hyperlink it to your resume. You could hyperlink it to your networking emails. You could hyperlink it to your LinkedIn. It's a great way for someone to meet you beyond just the online application, beyond just you being a digital person. Um, blogs, it doesn't have to be a blog. It could be a, a post. It could be a short form post. It could be a video. You know, get comfortable with what types of content could you share to get your voice out there because it's, it's a brand, but the brand is showing your voice and your voice is showing your ideas, your expertise, your skills, your value. And if somebody can notice that, hiring managers, employers, they're on here with us, be, you know, participate in that conversation and, and, and help them get to know you and what you can offer by just talking about the work itself. If you're in a conversation about your industry, right, what can you share or add where they may say, oh, wait, actually, we should talk, right? Um, and use platforms where your audience is. 
So some people are on Twitter, some people are on like, it really depends and it really varies. If you're looking into something community-based or social media, maybe you're on Facebook, maybe you're on Instagram, right? So really try to be where they are, um, especially in the tech space. There's so many communities, marketplaces, digital, you could be on Slack, wherever it is, be where they are, right? Uh, be where the people are. Okay. So uh, job search. Um, this is a super quick formula for kind of where to spend your time. So exploration, learning, and research. Understanding your target role, industry, and environment is such an important thing for you to be efficient. And by the way, the learning continues. You can do learning before you job search and you can do learning during your job search. But understanding what the best fit direction is for you is going to save you so much time and energy in knowing like what to apply to, who to reach out to, how to tailor your branding and your materials, et cetera. At least 50% networking, if not more. And that means identifying the right people, reaching out to them on email, hosting informational calls, following up with them, asking for introductions, preparing for those calls. There's a lot that you could do and protecting the time around this is what's gonna facilitate you to say, let me, network more if I protect 50% of my job search time, whether you're spending an hour a week or 10 hours a week, am I spending half of that time figuring out how to reach new people so you can introduce yourself as a person, right? You're, we need your brand to be you as a human and so much today is too digital, right? Beyond the online application, behind the LinkedIn profile, we need you to be a person and having a phone call or a video call or it doesn't even have to be in person, but having 20, 30 minutes with somebody is the best way to show your brand, right? It's not just branding, it's becoming your brand because you're showing them that you're a real person, um, meeting people, that's the key. Um, job boards, 10%, 15%, 20% maximum. I don't like you to be drowning in those job boards. Um, it's very easy to get lost in them. They're not even often updated. And, and to be honest, statistically, jobs are landed through networking. And so it's good to check these, but just shouldn't be an all day, every day activity. Um, skill development, this will keep you positive, creative, and remember your value by continuing to learn and hone your skills. It's something you can talk about during your interviews. Um, it, it's something you can add to your branding, right? So if you're pivoting, can you show that you're doing a project? Can you show that you're doing a course? Put that on the resume, put that on the LinkedIn as a work experience. Really show them that you're doing the thing right now that you wanna be doing, right? Whether it's a self project, a side project, a pro bono project, show them that you're doing the thing that they need you to be doing pretty much, right? Um, and reflecting and iterating, right? If we're just heads down, doing, 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 we need to take a step back sometimes and say, how's it going? What am I doing well? What am I not doing well, right? And, and get a coach, get a mentor, get a peer to talk with and support you um, because, you know, we need to, no one's perfect. And without the guidance or support, it's, it's possible you're just sort of running with your own efforts, but we need to zoom out and say, what's, what's going well, what's not, and how do I improve my own process? Um, and self-care. Don't burn out. That's important. And that's a part of job search, right? Take care of yourself, reflect, meditate, journal, exercise. This will keep your mindset happy and focused and energized. And the mindset is the key here. It is the key. Um, your mindset, your accountability, and your practical efforts, all three of those things are super important. I'm going to go through career exploration super, super, super quickly. So career exploration, is a process that is distinct from and a precursor to the job search. It involves learning and reflection to compare, contrast, and clarify which path you actually want to pursue, which path is gonna be a fit for you, okay? So I really encourage you to do this before you apply. Um, and why is it so important to come before job search? It's gonna make it more efficient. It's gonna make your interview that much more successful, effective, and compelling. And it's gonna increase the odds that you actually like the job once you get there, right? We're gonna avoid job hopping. Um, here's the process of how you would go through career exploration. Step one is asking yourself, do I need to figure out my direction? Do I have full clarity on my direction or not? Once you do that, you wanna start reflecting on your interests. You wanna reflect on your affinities, your tendencies, your natural strengths, what gives you energy, what you're great at, what you're natural at, what you enjoy doing, what you find important, what you find interesting. You're gonna turn those things into options for roles and industries. 
Once you have options, then you are going to do research, networking as a means of learning, sometimes experiential learning, but I usually leave that towards the end, and reflection and iteration. Networking is the key, and there's a lot more we could talk about, about how to properly network in order to learn. Um, but there's really, you want to paint an accurate picture of what are these roles really like so that you can figure out which one is the best fit for you. That's what leads you to a clear direction. That's when you can move into job search. And that's, of course, what leads you to job fulfillment. Um, I always say if your career search isn't fun, your job won't be either. So make sure you're enjoying your networking and your interviews. You guys are, you know, those are conversations where you're talking about the work. You're talking about problems to be solved and methods to go solve them. If that's not an interesting conversation, we should probably take a step back and figure out, you know, do I really want to pursue this, right? So this is super quickly, who am I, what do I do? Woken, that is my company. And we guide you through all of these different tools and processes. Um, and we, we really guide you in terms of what to do, how to do it, when to do it, why to do it, where to do it. And uh, we take you through all of these different things, including deciding on upskilling. If you guys are in a career pivot, deciding on the most reputable, worthwhile, uh, further learning programs, courses, certifications, that's important. So we wanna make sure you feel good about which one of those to do. Um, and of course, guide you through all of uh, job search, career exploration, and personal branding, like I just mentioned. And this is what we are doing. We are reminding you, you can and should find a job you love, making sure that every working professional can be intentional at every juncture. So get in touch. I'm here. I'm happy to hang out uh, for a few more minutes and answer any and all questions you have. But uh, you can uh, get in touch. I always offer a free initial call. So this Calendly link is my calendar and you can book time with me uh, whenever you'd like to talk about how you're doing and if I have any ideas or suggestions for you. Um, so I will pause any questions that I can answer about any career topic, any question on your mind, any challenges or something you'd like to uh, go over more. Feel free to write in the chat or you can unmute as well and would be happy to hear from you. Hello. Yes. Hi, this is Valerie. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. What do you, I'm 55. So, and I haven't worked for a few years because I was taking care of my mother. And I also have a big gap from raising my kids. So what's your suggestions? So you're re-entering work. Are you asking, you know, how do you figure out your direction? Are you asking, like, what, what's your specific? Um, I guess, yeah. How do you figure out your direction? Just yeah. what you said. Yes. You so this uh, process here, this is the process that I've designed to really take you step by step through how do I spend time and how do I structure a process of learning and reflection to compare my options so that you can feel informed and intentional with whatever the next step is in terms of the role, the industry, and the environment. So I know this is just a visual example of it, um, but right. we actually have a, a platform and a process and, and, and we set up coaching calls to guide you through that process. So I'm happy to sort of explain it a little bit deeper if you would like, but um, this is really- kind I'll of call you. you. I'll, make a, I'll make an appointment with you. Yeah, that would be perfect. Let's talk. <laughs> and um, you know, again, this is our bread and butter. And it's, I built out this process because I saw so many people with challenges in job search because they- didn't know how to answer interview questions in the sense of like, mm -hmm. where, where do you want to be in five years or whatever? And it's like, we need those answers for ourselves, right? And if we can answer that right. in a way that we can be confident, then of course, that's such a more compelling uh, interview that we can offer and answers we can offer. Um, because an interviewer can just sniff it out when you're telling them what you want to hear. So that's why I fleshed all of this out to say, how can we really clarify the answers in a way that like we actually believe those answers so that when you go into job search, it all makes sense. You can get behind it. You can feel confident versus you just telling them what you think they want to hear. So that's what this is all about. And, you know, it, it's a process that takes, it, it depends, it's all self-paced, but it depends on um, your pace. So I've had people do it in a month or two or three or four. It really totally depends on your timing, your availability, your capacity, your speed, your readiness. 
Um, but it's all very practical. And so my, you know, main thing in life is to remind you that um, this is feasible and to educate people that it is possible to go through a journey and get to the point of confidence to know what's best for you as a next step, right? Um, so, so this is us making it practical, making it realistic um, so that you can actually get to that uh, feeling of confidence. Okay. Yeah, I need that feeling of confidence. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. I'll put the website here too so you guys have it and you can just copy and paste this link. Um, and this is my calendar. Um, you're, thank you. Thank you, Dana. And you're welcome. Um, any other questions? I'm happy to hang out for another five or so minutes if anyone else has anything. Um, yes, Sujong, you're very, very, very welcome. Uh, any other questions that I can answer before we hop off? I'm happy to hang out for another minute or two if anyone has anything else on their mind. Hey, Rachel, I have a question. Yeah. So can you talk a little bit about how some of the, some of the people who are kind of going through a transition from like a non-technical to a technical role, like where would you suggest highlighting that on their resume? Um, let me think. So non-technical to technical. I mean, look, it, it in essence, a resume is going to show your background sort of no matter what. Um, but I think having a section like your projects or the programs and the courses and your uh, your portfolio and the clients and the work and whatever's going into your transition. If you're, I imagine you're doing some level of training or uh, it could be pro bono work. It could be anything you're doing. So you can be creative with how you format that on the resume, but in essence, like you're going to show your background and you're going to show what you're doing now. Um, and, and on the LinkedIn too, I should have put this into the slides, but under work experience, you can actually just add a work experience. If you're doing a training, a course, a certification, something, you can just add that as a work experience so that it shows what are you doing right now? And you can use that role title that you want to use. Um, so, so, so that's kind of my short answer. Um, but you, you know, you'd have to really go deeper into each of the templates and each person's a little different in terms of what they're working on right now and, um, how to format that and how to highlight it. But you know, again, we have two different templates that we use, um, but be creative with it and just simply make sure that sort of what you're working on right now is absolutely highlighted. Um, be authentic with it. Like what makes sense to you in terms of how much space does this thing need and um, how can we format that in a way that gets across whatever it is you need to get across, right? Like if you're doing a program, are we explaining it fully? If you've got some projects going on, do we have enough space to talk about that project, um, right? So it's, it's a little hard to say without diving into those templates, but um, make sure it's there, make sure it's comprehensive. And, you know, if you need some support, a, a coach, a mentor up here um, can help you edit that and make sure that the right things are getting the right amount of space on, on that document. Thank you. Cool. Any other questions? All right. Um, I hope this is helpful, guys. Stay in touch. I'm happy to help. Uh, you've got my calendar link. And uh, yeah, uh, keep in touch, guys. I hope this is helpful. And uh, we'll talk soon, OK? Thank you. I take, we'll follow up with like um, information uh, from Rachel and myself. Um, so we'll make sure to follow up on that so you guys have all the information